Also, who is monitoring the questions? Yeah, wife. Yeah, okay. we are. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon, dear friends, or good morning, or whatever in, in which part of the world you are, you're watching us. Today, uh, we have a very interesting topic. Today, we are discussion, gl discussing glamping industry, and we have a very interesting uh, guest. Mr. Talal Benjaloon is here with us today. He is a co-founder of Glamping Hub. Uh, I suggest we wait for a couple of more minutes so that uh, we have more friends joining us. And then I will start off with introducing Mr. Talal. All right. Dostlar, əgər ehtiyacınız olarsa, mən bugün tərcümə edəcəm. Zəmət olmasa bildirərsiniz ki, sizin Azərbaycan dilində tərcümə ehtiyacınız varsa, yoxsa yox. Hər ehtimala qarşı ilkin təqdimat zamanı mən tərcüməni edəcəm. Daha sonrasında ehtiyac olmasa bildirərsiniz tərcüməni və stop edərik. So, I think it's time to start now. So, as I mentioned, uh, today we are discussing glamping, which is a relatively new notion. Uh, especially for um, Azerbaijan, which is a destination with a relatively young tourism industry. So um, today we have with us Mr. Talal Benjaloon, who is a, a CEO and a founder of Glamping Hub. Uh, just a little bit, bit background information about Mr. Talal. After dropping off a professional career managing hotels in Turkey, Egypt, and Morocco, Mr. Talal has been fully committed to entrepreneurship, starting up several projects uh, related to the travel world, where Glamping Hub stands out as uh, one of the best startups in space, especially after participating in, in Startup Chile, Next Step Challenge, and have raised more than 5 million euros equity from VCs and angel investors. Currently, Glamping Hub is the leading booking platform for unique outdoor accommodations. The platform has more than 35,000 properties spread around more than 90 countries uh, with, with a team of more than 100 professionals from different parts of the world. Besides Glamping Hub, Mr. Talal is actively involved in startup world and entrepreneurship, mentoring different projects, as well as acting as a speaker and a mentor in several organizations and events. Mr. Talal, uh, it's a great honor uh, to, to have you here. Uh, thanks Thank you. for joining us today. Um, now you, the floor is yours. Uh, it would be great to hear about uh, your thoughts, what glamping is, how it all started, uh, what are some metrics in the industry? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you, Wafa. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I hope uh, you all uh, speak uh, English. Uh, uh, if not, uh, we have uh, the translation uh, uh, for you right there. Um, yeah, so uh, so definitely glamping uh, as an industry is a, is a is very young uh, industry uh, that uh, uh, 
but but um, but young as uh, as of the term glamping you know like it's uh, we've been a lot of people have been traveling in into rural uh, areas and then have been uh, uh, you know like uh, staying in these uh, type of accommodations and then we've seen uh, all of these type of accommodations like tents or or haimas, uh, as we say uh, in, uh, in Morocco, like they, they have been there forever. It's just that uh, every, you know, like everyone would have this type of accommodations everywhere in the world, but they had no umbrella that will englobe all of these accommodation. And then uh, uh, last in 2007 is when uh, the very first uh, time we've heard of the term glamping was in the US by this journalist and then and it just started you know like as everything in the us you know uh they love putting words into something that doesn't exist and then starting from there you know like uh, there's a whole industry coming up uh, from there so since 2007 a lot of people uh throughout the world especially in the us uh they've been using the term glamping to define their outdoor accommodations so basically uh, that's where we found uh, Glamping Hub found this uh, opportunity, uh, but that was like later in uh, 2009, 2010, when we were like, okay, well, there is something right there. There is a niche uh, uh, within the travel industry uh, that we need uh, that we need to cover. Um, uh, and 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 you know, like uh, the, the whole glamping term start uh, start to begin to. Uh, to, you know, like a lot of people start like to think about it or to hear about it more and more uh, later on, like way after, uh, especially, uh, you know, like after all of these platforms started going on, like Airbnb, uh, our platform, Glamping Hub, uh, that we do a lot of marketing, a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of terminology that we use within our SEO strategy. And then that's how, uh, you know, like even the, the media start talking and start actually asking us, uh, what is glamping? Tell us more about this. And then that's when we kind of, so we had the chance since we were first to market to define what this glamping is. So at the end, uh, glamping comes from uh, uh, the term glamour and camping, which is uh, just giving it a hint of, uh, 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 so glamour, you know, like a lot of people, they think glamour because it's, you know, like it's something very luxurious in this, which it is luxurious, but, uh, at the end, glamping, uh, it, uh, it is more of you go to nature, but you have uh, the quality and standards of a hotel. So it doesn't have to be, you, you don't go camping and then you have to rough it and then put up a tent or, or even, uh, uh, you know, like sleep on the floor or something like that. So it's more of the commodities and then, uh, uh, and then the, uh, you know, like uh, you, you will find uh, in nature, an accommodation that have a bed and a shower and some services and even some activities, which are one of the most important um, uh, things around glamping. So, so we started Glamping Hub, uh, uh, like I said, like uh, around 2009, which was at the very beginning uh, when we started uh, just a website uh, talking about uh, the, the glamping industry, you know, like, okay, well, this is glamping, this is the definition of glamping, these are some of the accommodations. And then uh, we thought that we could be, we could have like a business model just uh, of uh, uh, giving information about glamping um, in general, and then having some of the, uh, of the hosts put in their, um, uh, their publicity or their advertisement in our platform. Later on, we thought that there is a huge opportunity. People are asking more and more. And like I said, the media helped a lot because it's a, it's it's a very cool, it's very attractive uh, type of doing uh, traveling and, and doing tourism, and then that's why this type of content is also attractive for the for the media industry. They're like, okay, well, we need to give something new. We need to inspire people. So and, and so we change our business model to a transactional one. Uh, I'm sure some of you uh, uh, already know what it is. You know, like just uh, connecting the hosts with the guests. And then that's where Glamping Hub started as a, like a transactional uh, platform. Uh, and then we will get just a commission out of it. Uh, at the very beginning, it was uh, it was very challenging because, because of the lack of, uh, of offer, uh, uh, as of the lack of accommodations around the world. So we were very focused on the US market because that's where this term is very popular. And then we needed to, um, 
we needed to just uh, focus on that market. Still, most of our business, almost uh, 80% of our business is coming from the US because that's where, where the whole trend and then the whole hype of clamping is, is still going on. And then, we're, uh, and then we're already seeing that now it's coming to Europe little by little, even though our headquarters is in Spain, um, our market still in the US, Canada, uh, uh, Australia and, uh, and, and New Zealand. Uh, and then now this new trend is coming to Spain. Uh, it's coming to Europe in general, Spain, France, uh, uh, Netherlands, UK, um, because you know, like finally, uh, like, like I said, you know, like a lot of trends, they start in the US and then little by little, like maybe like five, six years later, they come to Europe and then that's what they get developed. So, so we're talking about like the, these accommodations are, uh, are outdoor accommodations that have like so many services uh, that are really important for them. Uh, so we're speaking about yurts, uh, safari tents, uh, uh, you know, like tree houses, uh, and even uh, you know like some cabanas that uh, that you can find uh, within the forest. Um, and then what's so curious about it is that that uh, the, the how it works within the travel industry is very different. Uh, in terms of the customer journey within a website, what do people look like look for when they want to go glamping, and then what is the uh, 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 why do they actually buy uh, uh, an accommodation or they book an accommodation? So it's not um, it's not at all like uh, like the the, the normal uh, like hotel business or accommodation business uh, that we all know. Uh, which is, uh, I was discussing this with uh, one of the startups uh, lately that I'm mentoring uh, because they're, they're making, you know, um, uh, a booking platform for, for, you know, like trips made, uh, already made trips. And then, uh, but now, that, now with, the, with this crisis of the COVID-19, they're switching and they're pivoting around, like giving, instead of giving, uh, 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 you know, like a package with, uh, with a flight and an accommodation and then services, you know, like, or, or activities and this and that, they're switching to local, um, uh, local getaways and then in rural areas. And why in rural areas? Because it's remote. And then suddenly just the world right now is going through or going to, uh, to be in remote, um, you know, like everyone is seeking this remoteness which is great for rural uh, traveling and then for glamping also. And then I guess this is just good news. I mean, um, uh, for, for the industry. Uh, and then, so, but the thing is the behaviors of the customers are totally different. So the behavior of the customer, they don't go to a website to, uh, to just, um, uh, for instance, Glamping Hub or any other website, even Airbnb, they have so many uh, accommodations uh, uh, in, um, uh, 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 that, that are glamping. So that they go to the, those type of voice, website just to get inspired first because they don't know what they're looking for. Uh, the normal customer for the travel industry, um, uh, especially, I mean, I would say like business customers, let's say uh, they, they, need, they need, and then the world need is important. They need to go to Paris, for instance. So they go to booking.com click, you know, like just type Paris and then the dates from here to here. And then they will, they will receive, you know, like the search results, maybe one filter or two, and then boom, they make the booking. In terms of glamping, it's totally different. They go to websites to get inspired. They need to see, they need to feel it. They need to see a, a beautiful picture. They need to, uh, uh, to understand maybe through like a video or, or what they read like our customers, they read a lot to the comments of the people because they need to feel what they, they need to see what to expect over there. And then after a long period of time, uh, you know, clicking and, and going back and then clicking again. So then maybe they will make a reservation. So, so it's a whole different type of, uh, uh, of tourist uh, because, because it's still something new. And then when you want to go to nature and when you want to, to go uh, discover uh, uh, or, or, or you want to get away from the city to something remote, you don't necessarily um, uh, you don't necessarily stick to uh, a destination itself, and then that's something we've used in our marketing uh, uh, our marketing team uh, st start using this term that the accommodation is the actual destination, not a destination as you know like where you go and like imagine. 
uh, you want to go uh, here in Barcelona to uh, to Montserrat, uh, um, um, uh, how do you say, uh, mountains. So it's not that the Montserrat mountain is the destination, it's because I found this accommodation that it's in Montserrat, that's why I'm going, and then the accommodation be becomes the destination. Uh, so. So this is talking a little bit about like how customers like they behave uh, regarding uh, the like within this in, this industry. Um, I would say also that uh, most of our clients, and then this is also generalized for the the whole glamping industry, is uh, our women, and then and then it has a reason why, um, because in general, uh, the women decide where to go because they have higher standards. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, where do they they want to sleep, or higher standards of uh, uh, of uh, of cleanliness, higher standard standards of uh, uh, I would say uh, to have like a, a comfortable bed, or you know like a shower, or this or that. With their men, they don't care that much. So and that's why like the decision makers in this terms, you know, like at the end, who make who will make this booking would be women in general, especially in the US. This is the trend that we have seen. And then now that we're working with uh, with some uh, some other markets, it's the same thing again. You know, like it's women generally uh, that, that make this decision. And then, you know, like there, there's so many, uh, you know, I would say like jokes around, uh, but you know, like from all of the, uh, from, from our customer service, you know, like it's important to have those standards such as uh, like hair dryer, you know, like that we see in all hotels, but you know, like some decision, like you would pick one accommodation uh, instead of the other one because one has a hair dryer and the other one, no, now it's a standard in hotels and glamping is not yet. So some, some of these behaviors of customers, they will pick one thing uh, rather than another thing just because of that. Or, uh, or now also like the trend of, uh, uh, the organic food, you know, like, and that's everything is related because um, uh, you go to a certain accommodation and then they offer, a, a, you know, like a, a type of uh, uh, facilities and then, uh, and then activities and then even, you know, like uh, uh, some uh, food and beverage uh, around there. And then if it's organic, then it's an added value. So like there are so many added values around that uh, that make this customer actually want to buy. So it goes through uh, so from the facilities to the activities to the actual eco-friendliness, which is another thing that people would buy one accommodation and not the other one because or like they feel good about themselves booking like something that it's eco-friendly rather than something that it's not. So, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's another thing. And also uh, in terms of like type of accommodations, I would say it, would, it will depend. So people would rather book in general, I'm telling you, like these are uh, statistics that we we manage, like the, the data that we manage. In general, they will book a tree house, a tree house because uh, it's something that we've been you know, like since you were little. You just think about it. You would love to have a tree house, and then at the end, you know, like you never had a tree house. Like some people had a tree house. I myself never had a tree house when I was when I was younger, um, and then now it's just exciting to do something different when you're adult, uh, and and then, of course, in the U.S., a lot of people they would go and then build themselves a treehouse, um, and then start uh, selling it in our website or an Airbnb or in our. Uh, but but again, because the destination, the the accommodation is the actual destination. The accommodation is what sells more. But also, I would say so treehouse in general, and also like the type of accommodation that defines uh, defines a country or an area or something like that in Morocco which is uh, my country of origin is, uh, uh, it's still like the number one glamping accommodation is the, the khaimas or the, the, the tents, uh, which are in the desert. And then this is what people are seeking because one, once you are in Morocco, you want to go and then you want to experience this type of accommodation, which is uh, very local. So the local part of it uh, is, is important. Uh, and in other countries, uh, in France, there's, uh, there are these, uh, they call them the les roulottes, which is uh, which are like gypsy caravans, and then these are like like super super um, old accommodations that actual gypsies used to uh, used to use, and then now they convert them to uh, uh, to um, uh, 
uh, to accommodation. So, uh, so yeah, there's there's so many so many things around there, and the good the good thing uh, again is that uh, there is innovation also in terms of glamping accommodations. Now you see domes, and then you see uh, you see underwater accommodations. You see like some things bubbles. You know, like we have some even like a bubble that it's in the middle of uh, of nowhere, and then it still serves as an accommodation. So, I would say anything that it's in a remote area that has a unique structure and then serves serves you not only the accommodation but also you know like those commodities like i was saying uh or the standards that are the hotels and then and gives you some activity around it it makes a uh like a glamping accommodation functional and then people will go there um uh, and what else um I don't know if I did really fast. I don't know if you need to do some translation out there. Um, okay, if not necessary, then, then we'll just keep in English. Uh, yeah, th this is in general, uh, WAPA, uh, that, that I wanted to, uh, uh, to give just an introduction about yeah. the industry. And I would love to hear some questions because I think uh, I can give some more insights uh, through the, throughout the questions. Uh, definitely. Uh, thank you so much for a uh, general introduction. I uh, just want to say that we have with us today Sharifa, who is the head of product development at Azerbaijan Tourism Board. And later on, she will uh, she will uh, talk a little bit about what Azerbaijan doing in this direction, uh, specifically mm -hmm. glamping and ecotourism. So she will share her thoughts um, regarding the questions. Okay. You, you. Uh, of course, it will be impossible not to touch uh, and talk about the situation the whole world is in now with this pandemic, and of course, yeah. it has um, affected the whole uh, industry of travel and tourism and the mm -hmm. all aspects in every all the, of the destinations. How it, has this affected the glamping industry? And with all these hygiene measures and sanitation coming at the spotlight once again. How is Glamping Hub uh, working towards this direction to ensure that post-pandemic people feel assured to rent those places yeah. and to, to use Glamping Hub? Yeah, so in general, you know, I'm gonna speak about the glamping industry in general uh, is, uh, of course, it, it, you know, like there, there is a slowdown, you know, like once everyone is locked down in their houses, no one is, uh, is traveling anymore. So, you know, like the, when you see the curve of reservation, like there is like a big, uh, uh, a big drop because people, they just don't know what's going on. They don't know what's going to happen. And then uh, especially that uh, everything is related to uh, the specific laws in the different countries, you know? So, uh, uh, so in the US, uh, depending even on the state, uh, some of them, they, they have no laws. They're like, okay, you can just like still open, you know, like your, uh, and I'm talking about like all the, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the accommodations, like whether hotels or motels or, or campings or campings, and then they're still able to open. But in Spain, for instance, uh, right now, you know, like you can only use hotels, but only uh, uh, dependent on the phase of the, of the, of, of the region. And then you can only use the, the the room but not the facilities of the hotel so so both the hosts uh in, in the glamping industry both the host and the guests they're still confused uh at the very beginning so the drop is pretty clear but the good news right now is that again the media is doing is doing a, a really good job like for for us which is a good thing you know like and then you see so many articles uh, pointing out that people uh, will start traveling locally, which is a good thing. And then this is, you know, like glamping was, is defined, I don't know if I mentioned before, um, uh, most of the, you know, like the, the traveling that happens in, in uh, even in glamping hub, uh, people that would go not, uh, not more than 200 miles away. So it's a local type of travel. Uh, so, so now people would want to travel locally, would want to go to a remote place, which is so they don't have that much contact with the people because they feel safer. And then, uh, and then in terms of like hygiene and everything, that is still, there is no standard yet that is done. So the only thing that I would say is sometimes, you know, like the cleaning fees will go up there because, you know, like those hosts, they need to clean their accommodation a little more. But these are the very uh, these are the very first steps that we're looking we're seeing right now in the industry, 
uh, that, that's, that's going on. The good news is people are looking towards local and remote, and that is definitely like two definitions of glamping. Thank you very much. We have a question on our Facebook page. Um, okay. It says, it's from Fidan Rustamli. It says, how do you see the potential of glamping in emerging markets in countries such as Azerbaijan? So um, I, think, uh, I think it's really important uh, to, uh, to be the first to market, especially, uh, you know, like we've had, uh, uh, we've, ha we've had this, uh, this really interesting uh, um, uh, experience with Croatia. Uh, you know, Croatia, is, I, I think it's still like the very first, uh, like in terms of uh, bookings and confirmation and everything uh, in, uh, in, in, in our platform, uh, just because they were the very first ones to, to, uh, to bring these accommodations to the world. And then, and then they, they just have like uh, these like very luxurious safari tents and stuff uh, around there. And then uh, look, for, for Azerbaijan, I think if there is nothing around there, and then people want to uh, to visit, you know, like you guys have uh, a lot of countries around you uh, that, and, and they're not, I I think, well, I'm not, not very good in geography right now looking at where Azerbaijan is, but I know that there's a lot of countries that they can, they can travel. I don't know about, again, about the visa situation, if they can travel within, uh, uh, you know, like drive into Azerbaijan or not. Um, but I think there is there, there could be you know like a good potential, as long as you know how to uh, create these accommodations, and then there is there is something unique about them. It's just uh, so you, you need to create like destinations little by little, uh, and then start with local tourism, and then you know like looking at other other people coming from abroad to uh, to to wherever you, to wherever you are, and then super, super important is to enhance uh, wherever the region is within Azerbaijan, uh, just to, uh, uh, to enhance all the part of nature. Uh, and because people would want to go somewhere where there is like this, this beautiful nature, this like special thing, uh, what they want to visit. Thank you. Sharifa, would you like to add something regarding that, regarding Azerbaijan and glamping and the future plans that we have? Uh, hello, yes, actually. Um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet everyone here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Talal, it's really a good point that you mentioned. It's totally new for our destination, but we had few ex examples where experiences when we started kind of glamping, like in um, this year, 2019, we had the uh, Yaylah festival in Gedebe, which was in the tents, and it was the one of the um startups for us one of the cases that we started such experiences also mm -hmm. in in the um, uh, summertime we had one festival in the rural area in the Hanal uh, and there we had uh, some camping um, experience plus uh, festival so it also somehow shows that we had such experiences started in the country but in, in general we um, as a destination, Mm -hmm. um, I will. I should mention that we had really uh, good potential for the camping, glamping, uh, especially in the regional areas where there is the nature, which nature meets with the gastronomy, with mm -hmm. the cultural attractions, and where you can feel exactly the feel of um, being in the nature. So this is actually. Um, I will quickly uh, add few. Uh, things about the uh, camping in Azerbaijan because mm -hmm. this is where we started with the with, uh, for this route. Um, I believe that camping is the baby steps for the glamping actually. Yes, yes. Um, that's why I should mention that camping it's becoming very uh, popular in the uh, country. Actually, it starts becoming pe popular for the locals rather than tourists because. Uh, it's quite new, as you said, but in the main tourist corridors in Azerbaijan, like north, northwestern parts, and in the south, we have quite uh, private sector camping areas um, with the infrastructure and even with the um, 
what we say, uh, villas or cottages nearby, which shows that you can even have uh, part time of the camping and part time of part time of um, resting in the uh, villa or in the cottage areas. Um, a part of this, uh, Minister of Ecology and the State Tourism Agency had some ideas about development of camping in the national parks because in national parks in Azerbaijan, it's the best areas to have the camping um, areas. And we started this experience with the Hirkan National Park, which is the best area to have the camping. And now it's uh, operating in the national park area. Uh, we have few ideas about developing it in different uh, national parks like Shirvan and a um, few uh, nearest points to the city. Uh, a part of this um, glamping also in the plans of Azerbaijan Tourism Board and State Tourism Agency in the um, Bobustan area near, it's the near to the city, like 60 kilometers, where there is the natural um, potential to uh, to develop the glamping, we are keen to develop glamping areas. This is mainly uh, what I want to add about Azerbaijan as a destination, uh, potential for the camping. Uh, the rest, I think, will be next. Thank you very much, Sharifa. Uh, we have a couple of more questions here, Talal, addressed to you. What would, you, would be your advice for someone who is interested in starting a glamping startup in untapped markets? So more uh, about business yeah. aspects of the well, uh, You know, like the, um, uh, uh, I think the, the very first thing is, uh, uh, is looking, well, I guess, I don't know if this, Sharifa can help us with this, uh, is, is about like the legal part of it, you know, so, so what are the aspects, like the legal aspects of it, you know, like depending on, uh, uh, on the country, depending on the area within the country, there are some limitations uh, uh, that would tell you like, okay, well, glamping is within camping, you know, like in Spain, for instance, some areas, they say, okay, so you only need uh, uh, the, 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 you know, like the, the license of camping, and then you're, you're allowed to do so like with the glamping part. So, so first of all, look at, uh, definitely look at the, um, the legal part of it, uh, the access to, uh, to the land, you know, like it's, it's uh, like if you wanna start a glamping business, is, it's not, uh, I mean, it, it's always better to have bigger lands as of, uh, you know, like I've seen some glamping accommodation that they only have small land and then just like this two or three accommodations, you know, and then that's it, but because they have uh, and I'm talking about like the private land because right next to it there there is uh, there is you know like um, uh, like a mountain or a trekking or something like that and then you know like they need to combine so so if you have uh, a lot of private land that helps also it helps also like this uh, um, uh, like developing this business and uh, and then also uh, you know, like another advice is to pick your accommodation accommodation very wisely so. Uh, uh, and this also has to do with the nature. So uh, in areas where, where it snows and then it rains and then, you know, like, and then, you know, like there's uh, so many differences like between the seasons, I would not recommend a tent, of course. A tent would only be uh, for, for areas where it doesn't rain that much, you know, like so, so a yurt is much better because, uh, uh, because it has, uh, you know, like it could be like for the snow, it could be, or, 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 or cabin like a wooden cabin could have, you know, like all of this, uh, um, you can put like heating system within it. Uh, and then you can have this like, uh, uh, like all of these facilities that are suitable for this. So it's, so, so choose, like, look at the, my advice would be look at the legislation, uh, choose your land right, then it needs to be near some natural attractions and then choose your accommodation wisely also just, uh, in order to attract these people and then because they need to be comfortable. Glamping is not camping, is more about like to be comfortable with the nature. Um, and, then, and then the last thing, which is uh, you could either create or just pick again that land near to it, which is the activities. Super important is to have things to do because people would go there and then they will get bored but it's important to have things to do around that, such as, you know, like I'm talking about nature activities, kayaking and, 
and biking and hiking and um, you know like bird watching you know like all of those things uh, that people normally do but at least there there must you must have some activities around it so either you go to a place where the activity is already there or you create your own activities uh, so some of the glamping hosts what they do they create this whole thing of the accommodation and then they add uh like the bikes that are included you know and then they have the kayaks because there is a lake near to them so they they add these activities either they uh they include them with the, with the price or it's an extra charge which also helps mm -hmm. sharifa you wanted uh, to uh, actually uh for legal procedures it's same what we have for the camping areas Either it can be uh, inside of the national parks. Uh, so there is the special places where you can do camping or glamping, uh, or you can have the special places which is, uh, can be rented uh, from the government. So there is the areas dedicated to the glamping or camping. Actually, in our uh, condition, we kind of putting them on the same uh, level. Or uh, yes, as I said, you can take it from the governmental. So for the private stakeholders, private uh, business owners who would like to create glamping areas in Azerbaijan, in the regional areas, they have two choices. Either they can see the natural areas which can be rented uh, for the time from the government, or they can build it or uh, rent it inside the national park areas. So this is the two uh, main um, ways how to do this. Also, I would like to add that, um, yes, it is not only tent, as you mentioned, uh, but in Azerbaijan, in the national parks, we have the special um, small houses, which can be used as the glamping areas as well. So, um, especially in the Shirvan National Park, we had such experience. We have such experience with the small areas, with the small cottage, inside of the national parks can be rented and you can have some um, uh, glamping, um, you can offer some glamping activities there. Um, uh, if we take consideration that in national parks, we have quite a um, number of the tourism activities like bird watching, uh, hiking and others. As you mentioned, it will be super match if you can, if you can have the glamping in the national parks and the, at the same time we can have some ecotourism activities in the national parks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you both for uh, detailed answers. We have another question. Um, what were the main challenges uh, when you first you faced when you first got into this business? into this industry and how has the glamping industry changed ever that, uh, after that since then well i would say like the main challenges uh, were definitely the uh the, the chicken and egg problem you know like whether whether you go for demand first or you go for the uh for, for, you know like for the go for, for for the has sorry for the guests or for the hosts uh, so, uh, so th those were like huge challenges at the beginning, but, but at the end, since, um, since these, these businesses like the glamping hosts are normally small businesses, they're what we call mom and pops. Uh, the, normally it's uh, someone who has a land and then they just want some extra money and then they're like, okay, well, we're just going to create this tree house or we're going to create this, uh, like here and it's fun. They love what they're doing. Uh, so they were, uh, they were like really willing to, uh, just to be in our website. Like we would call them and then it will be like some of them, I mean, most of them were, were, were like super, super fine with it. And then they were in our website without receiving a single booking for a long time, but they knew, you know, like this whole thing is, is starting. But uh, um, so I would say like from the host perspective, we didn't have that much of a problem, but attracting traffic to our website um, because we're a booking platform, that was a, a huge challenge. Uh, but also like it just, uh, uh, we did it through, uh, uh, through SEO, which is, you know, this is how we uh, search engine optimization. And then why that, that strategy is because like I mentioned, I mentioned at the very beginning and uh, the intro is that 
people don't know what they want when they're when they have that you know like you're a person and then you have the need of a getaway especially right now you know like everyone is uh in their homes and they're like i need to get away from the city i need to do something so you have no idea what you want so you go into google and then you just say and then you type normally um uh get away near Barcelona, you know, like that's what I would type right now, or, or, you know, like uh, accommodation with fireplace near, you know, like Madrid or something like that. This is, these are the searches that people, how they find us. So we, we kind of cracked that code of, uh, uh, you know, like optimizing our, uh, uh, you know, like our keywords so people can find us through these like specific things, which sometimes like if it, it seems weird, you know, like to, uh, and then there's, but there's no competition with it, you know, uh, while the travel, in the travel business, a lot of hotels, a lot of other booking platforms, they're fighting around the keywords of like hotels in New York or hotels in Barcelona, hotels in Paris, this and that. We go towards different type of keywords and then we just go, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, unique yeah you know like so for instance we are number one in google and then we've been number one in google for so long for unique what it what was uh, unique tree house near california or unique uh, accommodation near california with fireplace because people when they want to go they they want a fireplace because it's a unique thing and then they want to go there so of course the challenges were just finding these clients to come you know like the uh, the, the, to come to our website so they can book. And then also super important is that to give them, you know, like another challenge is once they're in your website is to show them uh, something real, which is pictures, descriptions, uh, you know, like co comments from, uh, from other, uh, other clients that have been there. So they need, you know, like the, these clients are the type of clients that read a lot about where they want, where are they going? So uh, it's, um, I mean, I would, I would say, I mean, yeah, it's very far from it, but it's very near in a way. This is like uh, when you're, uh, when you're doing your honeymoon, you really want to know and you really want to make sure that that trip is going to be worth it. So you read all of the travel blogs, you read all of the things, and then you make sure like, so when you go glamping, you want to do something special and then you really want to read. So the information that it's given that it's challenging too. And then we've just worked so hard like to, uh, to make the pictures right, to make, you know, like uh, uh, even like the picture guide that we gave to the hosts. This is maybe something you guys can work from the, from the travel board, you know, just create something like this is how, if you want to market this new type of accommodation, this is how you need to do it. And then these are like the things or the standards within the industry because your customer would want to see this in your website. Your customer would want to have this feeling, you know, like videos are, are, are like super, super huge in this market because they, um, people, they want to like have that feeling before booking. So these are the challenges that, uh, that you might find while, while creating the Atlantic site. I talked about competition, search engine optimization, fighting for the keyword. And we have this question, which could be a follow-up question. Do you consider Airbnb experiences as a potential competitor for Glamping Hub in the future? And this is the last question that we have. Uh, then we will wrap it okay. up. Yeah, yeah, no problems. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, uh, like these uh, Airbnb or Booking or or, uh, you know, like any other platforms, like even uh, VRBO, HomeAway, all of these, uh, uh, they, they, they definitely are their competitors of, uh, of Glamping Hub, like, uh, uh, but, uh, but also like, and then they do have accommodations that are glamping, but they are mainstream. They, they have every other accommodation. So uh, like I was telling you, uh, if you wanna look for a tree house, like people now that they know Glamping Hub, like they will come to Glamping Hub directly and then be like, okay, because that's where you can find tree houses. Uh, but of course you can go to Airbnb right now and then you can look for a boat, you know, but, but usually people would go to Airbnb to find an apartment within a city, like in the city area because they, they want an alternative uh, from hotels. 
Uh, but of course, like you can go to Airbnb in any city and then you find, you look for boat with the filter and then you will find some boats. The thing is you will find one or two and then it's not, the experience is not the same. Like I said, uh, uh, like, we are a niche within the travel industry, within the nature, like tra like nature travel, let's say, it's it's a specific niche. And then that's that's our strength at the same time, is that like, if you if you work hard on those keywords, if you work hard on, on trying to bring all of, uh, 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 all of this traffic that comes from, uh, from the search engines with these keywords, and then you work on them, people will get to your page and then, when they get to your page and then they like what they see, they will definitely buy. You know, so uh, so uh, it is one of the strategies. Of course, you can you can go to the other strategy, which is buy in. Uh, you know, like with, you know, like uh, clicks. You know, like all of these customers they come to you, but sometimes uh, they will click. You will pay the search engine or Facebook or whoever, uh, but at the end they won't they won't be uh, be buying within you. So so the the, the conversion rate is not that high as of yet. So that's all I can say. Thank you very much, Mr. Talal. Thank you, Sharifa. Uh, and uh, Talal, uh, just to wrap it up, as I said, this was our last que uh, question. What would your general recommendation be for those who are into startups and who are into glamping? What would you generally advise and recommend to young minds who, are, who want uh, to test their skills in this sphere? So um, I think I think it's a very uh, good opportunity right now that we live in. You know, so the world is changing, and then people are going towards. Uh, we've I've been here in local, and uh, and then uh, you know like um, uh, remote and, and nature and then eco friendliness so much during this this uh, this crisis period, uh, and then it, I think it's a huge opportunity, and like people would want to do that. And then the glamping industry itself, it's not only. So it's not only the accommodation itself. So, uh, so there's so many like businesses that goes around it, and then it moves a lot of things. So, it moves uh, the people that actually build these accommodations. So, a lot of startups are going towards there, like towards you know, like okay, well now we're gonna just like start, we're gonna be the builders of the glamping accommodation, and if someone wants to uh, to create this uh, you know like glamping site, we will go and then build build it for, for them. Uh, you, you can go around activities, you know, like just like giving activities toward, towards uh, like this glamping uh, site. And then you can go, of course, you know, like to do the whole thing, you know, like buy land and then, or rent a land and then just like uh, set up, set up these, um, these accommodation and start, and start um, uh, selling them. Uh, I think also today, better than when we started in 2009, there's so many uh, platforms where you can, promote this glamping accommodation if you start one. So starting from glamping hub to Airbnb, VRBO, home away, and then like, I'm, I'm sure there are specific ones in different countries and stuff. There's, there's so many, so much opportunities, especially with the online, where you can just having good pictures, good descriptions, and then giving a good service, you can just sell, and then it's easy to do so. So there is a, there, there is a switch in, in how people travel nowadays. And then I think it's a good opportunity to uh, to do so. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, advices, for sharing your knowledge with us. I'm sure it was very beneficial for those watching us on Facebook, and we will share the recordings as well so. for, to reach more people. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.